But I also uh, make the paint for the beautiful bright red colors that's all made with those pigments and egg yolk, the tempera. The others are, are uh, with oil paint. I do use oil paint. But I put the oil paint in and make it very light, like a tea, like a wash. Feminist freedom. Well, it's longer than that, but I think it's really about freedom, don't you? It's about the ability to, to be whoever you are, to, to be a woman, to be born in the world, and to become whoever you are whoever you want to be, to explore that freely without having all the constraints of what we're supposed to do. Feminism, what, we, what it is is that in my generation and for thousands of years before, women grew up with specific um, uh, rules as to what they were supposed to be. I mean, there are women now that still have to live by it. Look at, I mean, I'm sure in Mexico, in the United States, there's even in countries like the United States, there's still uh, rules that women have to abide by because they're women, yeah. you know, not because they're people. And so feminism, to me, is the ability not to have to live by those rules. Well, in, when I was young, you could not wear pants. You had to wear skirts all the time. Oh, okay. When I was young, you weren't supposed to study too hard because it would, make, it would not, not make it possible for you to get married or have, have a love relationship because you'd be too smart and you couldn't be smarter than mm. your love person, the person you loved. No, it doesn't happen anymore to women who are feminists. And, and the world has changed. We can't change 3,000 years in 20 or 30. It takes a long time. But things have changed. I think what has to start first is people have to think in their mind that it's possible. And then change begins. It takes a long time to change something that has been so uh, believed in and ingrained in people, right? Yes. So that's, that's what's going on. I mean, we're, we're working towards change. It's a long time for the change to happen. And we have to understand that young women don't know what we went through. And I went through much less than what my mother went through. From my mother's generation back, or from my grandmother's generation back, it was all the same. I mean, there were a few women, like Mary Wollstonecraft, and there were unusual women who were wealthy, or just unusual women in general, but very rare. But as a rule, for thousands of years, women lived the same way. Underneath a man, not able to be educated, not able to be appreciated except for their beauty, Yes. I'm in, this, I'm in this book that just came out where I show the picture of a piece that I made in 1991 or something, which is from an old Christmas tree. I don't think in Mexico they have the same custom. But in the United States they have a custom where they put Christmas trees up, which you'll see everywhere now because it's around Christmas. And they, people cut, they cut down the trees and they are, the trees are cut down. People buy them and put them in their house. Oh, yes. And they hang things all over them, right, make them very pretty. And then when Christmas is over, they throw them away because they're old. And so I have a piece that I made called Tree Altar, which is about uh, a metaphor. You know, metaphor in English yes. and Spanish is the same, huh? Yes. Okay. And so there's a metaphor of the Christmas tree that I found on the street that I made around a, a sort of a Renaissance altar, mm. sort of to bring back the feeling of the beauty of something that was once discarded, and I compare that in this statement to the fact that it's, it's, it's a metaphor for women who get, and mm. who get older and are discarded. Um, 
not unlike the traditional role of older women. In this altar, the tree is in the center as a triptych in the Renaissance manner, making it beautiful again and an object of reverence. I have always admired trees, even as a child, I felt that the trees were a metaphor for my experience of life. And then this, uh, this friend of mine who's a poet um, had written this poem for me for a project we did together, so I put that in too. I thought that would be beautiful to do. Yeah. I see it more as like a giotto, you know, a Renaissance, Italian yes. Renaissance piece, you know. So how they had this, they had the virgin here, and then they had the angels on these sides, remember, uh, with the little uh, triptych things, the giottos or the frangelicos or the... They had them like that in the museums, yeah? Or they made them for the churches. And so this is, has a quality. It's almost like the tree becomes, becomes like the Virgin Mary, you know, because the Virgin is usually here with the child or by herself. Maybe she's, like, standing like this, or a saint. There's the one with Mary Magdalene that has the hair all the way down. Have you ever seen that? It's amazing. She's not wearing anything, Mary Magdalene, but she just has hair. Only her hair covers her. Yeah. But it's, it's, that one is interesting, too, because in, in the tradition of Indian saints from Asia, Asia and India, those saints have um, uh, the women saints uh, were, went around naked, except that they used their hair to cover them. Um, for my students, what we did was, you know, we did this consciousness raising, which you'll see if you get a chance, or you can read about the books. We did this consciousness raising where we explored different topics, like, um, uh, did you so always want to be an art, uh, artist? Did your parents uh, uh, encourage you? Did your boyfriend, husband, or <laughs> love partner um, feel it was okay? How do you feel about your life and your future in that way? I mean, that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing we discussed. Okay. Art market, how did I get into the art yes. market? Well, I've joined women's cooperative galleries early on. So that, that helped. Well, it wasn't that, it, it wasn't as difficult as it could be. I mean, it was hard, but it wasn't terribly difficult. Only a certain few are accepted to the top. Louise Bourgeois, for example, was like probably 65 or 70 before she got recognition. And now she's 90. Yes. <laughs> so it takes, you know, it's a lot of things that go into being on the top. If you have to make work that people like on the top, it has to be, and that's the other, you make feminist work, you make work that's about women, uh, men don't find it so interesting. Yeah. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So they've been, who has the top? Men. So a few women get in there, but there's a, lot, a whole subculture of women who are making art that, that it takes a while to find. Make that be a good paper to write. Yes. Yeah. The subculture.